Jeremy mentioned Mike Pompeo's testimony yesterday. The Secretary of State appeared before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. It was the first time senators have had a chance to question the secretary since both the Singapore and Helsinki summits. The nearly three-hour hearing included several tense back and forths between Pompeo and senators from both sides of the aisle on topics including Russia, North Korea, and policy in other places as well. Today, the Trump administration is releasing what we're calling the Crimea Declaration. Quote, the United States calls on Russia to respect the principles to which it has long claimed to adhere and to end its occupation of Crimea. End of quote. I want to assure this committee that the United States does not and will not recognize the Kremlin's purported annexation of Crimea. We do not have nuclear inspectors yet on the ground in North Korea. Is that correct, Mr. Secretary? That is correct. Uh, North Korea continues to produce fissile material, nuclear bomb material. Is that correct? Uh, Senator, I'm trying to make sure I, I stay on the correct. Uh, I, yes, that's correct. Is there any verifiable evidence of progress towards denuclearization? Oh, yes. Absolutely. What is verifiable? We are sitting at the table having conversations. Um, we have had lots of discussions that I'm not going to get in here to today. I am afraid that at this point, the United States, the Trump administration, is being taken for a ride. Uh, fear not, Senator. Fear not. Uh, there's no evidence to the fear, country. Fear not, Senator. There's no evidence. Uh, Senator, fear not. Has the president told you what he and President Putin discuss in their two-hour closed-door meeting in Helsinki? Presidents have a prerogative to choose who's in meetings or not. I'm confident you've had private one-on-one -on -one meetings in your life as well. You've chosen that setting as the most efficient way to... I just asked you a simple question. Did uh, you, I, I just, I, I, you can't I'm eat up my seven minutes, answer, Mr. Senator. Secretary. Did, did, you, did he tell you what, whether or not uh, what happened in those two hours? Yes, Senator. The predicate of your question implied some notion that there was something improper about having a one-on-one -on -one meeting. I completely disagree with just, the premise I, of your I, I didn't ask you a predicate. I asked you a simple question. I hope uh, we're going to get through it. Did he tell you what transpired in the two-hour meeting? I've had a number of conversations with President Trump about what transpired in the meeting. I was also president when, president when he and President Putin both gave us a sense of what they discussed in the meeting that followed immediately after. Did, did you have I also had the chance did, to speak with Sergey Lavrov twice about the Russian view on what takes place. I think I have a pretty complete understanding good. Good. of did what you, took place Did you in speak meeting. to the translator who was at that meeting? No, I haven't. You draw a distinction between the president's comments and U.S. policy. Senator, the policies are themselves statements as well. Indeed, they're the most important statements that the administration makes. Well, policies are statements and statements are policies. It goes no, both that's ways. not true. That's, that's absolutely not true. But people make, I make lots of statements. They're not, they're not U.S. policy. The president says things, right? The, the president makes comments in certain places. We have, we have a national security council. We meet, we, we lay out strategies, we develop policies, right? The so president, how do I know the, the president then sets the course. How do I know the difference between a presidential the, statement that is not a policy and Senator, a statement that is. Senator, here, here's what you should look at. Com compare, I, compare the following. Barack Obama speaking tough on Russia and doing nothing. Those not were, true. It, it is true. I understand you want to rewrite the Obama policy on Russia, but that's simply okay, not true. Okay, can I clean that up, Senator? You're right. I, I misspoke If you there. want to clean it up, because I'd love to. when he Thank speaks, I'd love that is to. the policy I'd of the I'd love United to, States. Senator. Yeah. I'd love the chance to do that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I misspoke. It, it is okay. the case. Right. The, the president calls the ball. His right. statements are, in fact, policy, but it's the case that when all of us speak uh, in informal settings in response to questions, we're not being we, we're not covering the full gamut of things that, that impact the world. That's that's what I intended to say. I, I saw the glee on your side um, walking away, trying to make a political point from that. That's silliness. This president runs this government. His statements but are, fine. in fact, Good. U.S. Policy. So now we understand that when the president speaks, it is the policy. I can't say it more for forcefully. We really need a clear understanding as to what is going on, what our president is agreeing to, and what our strategy is on a number of issues. From where we sit, it appears that in a ready, fire, aim fashion, the White House is waking up every morning and making it up as they go. Is there a strategy to this, or is it, what, what is it that causes the president to purposely, purposely, create distrust in these institutions and what we're doing. Senator, I, I just I disagree with most of what you just said there. Um, you somehow disconnect the administration's activities from the president's actions. They're, they're, 
they're the one and the same. I notice that you are not responding to what I'm saying. I think I think I responded yeah. to everything that you well, said, Senator. No, no, you didn't. And the fact is that yeah. you, you just didn't. Okay. We, we and dis in fact, disagree. Senator. No, we don't disagree. That yeah. hell, let's run the transcript again. Right. If you want to talk we'll, about it. But the fact we'll, is, we'll let the world decide. It's the it's the president's public statements that create concern amongst senators on both sides of the aisle. And I, I, I was asking you if, in fact, there was some, you know, some rhyme or reason that this type of distrust or discord will be created. Some of, the of these statements um, actually achieve important policy outcomes yeah. for the United States of America. Some of them do. Yeah. And some of them are very damaging. So, David Ignatius, a lot for you to chew on there as we watch the, the highlights of that hearing yesterday. The argument throughout from Secretary of State Pompeo was to ignore the footsie that Donald Trump has continued to play with, with Vladimir Putin, including in public at Helsinki, and look at the policy. Is the secretary right there? Well, I, I think in that very testy series of exchanges, what you really saw from Pompeo was a kind of armed retreat from the positions that we thought uh, President Trump had taken in, in Helsinki. Now, no, the policies themselves hadn't changed. Can't really tell you what he talked about with Vladimir Putin. We're announcing that uh, our policy is to refuse to uh, endorse the annexation of Crimea. Uh, just uh, two weeks ago, it seemed that the president was heading toward support for that. No, there's nothing that's been decided on Syria. We've been getting consistent reports that there were discussions between Putin and Trump about Syria. So I think what we saw uh, to, uh, yesterday in all sorts of different ways was um, the administration pulling back from uh, positions that have become very controversial. Uh, we'll talk later about trade, but that's also part of this. Uh, but, but doing so in a way that seemed very combative, insisting that the president's being tough, hasn't changed. I think the clearest sign of where they are is the decision to cancel the planned Putin-Trump meeting for the fall at the White House. They're, they're putting that off uh, until after the elections. Why? Because they know that it's unpopular. They know that the pushback that you heard from every questioner, from Menendez, the Democrat, uh, similarly from Corker, the Republican, there's just a lot of unhappiness uh, in Congress about what, about the president's moves in, in Helsinki and since. And uh, I think Pompeo, as abrasive as he was in answering, was pulling back from the positions. But Caddy Kay, the stated reason yesterday from John Bolton, the national security advisor, for the postponement of that meeting or the invitation extended to Putin was they wanted to wait out the, quote, witch hunt. That was what John Bolton called it, a witch hunt. So as Mike Pompeo is up on the Hill talking about how tough they are on Russia, the National Security Advisor is saying the investigation into Russian interference in our elections is a witch hunt. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you have the National Security Advisor using in an official statement the words witch hunt is pretty staggering in and of itself. We don't know uh, that the Mueller probe will be wrapped up by the beginning of next year, which is what um, Mr. Bolton seemed to be implying, but uh, you know, David's right here. The optics of having a Putin summit in Washington in the run-up to the midterm elections was not going to play well um, for, the, for the president. And you've got this curious situation, which you're hearing from both the Pentagon and from the State Department, that increasingly decisions are being made in the National Security Council with little reference to what's happening with General Mattis and perhaps even with Secretary Pompeo but he seems to have a better relationship with Donald Trump at the moment and the cleanup jobs that are being done by the agencies and there's John Bolton who's the one who's actually leading what is happening when it comes to national security at the moment and that's causing quite a lot of concern especially at places like the Pentagon. I point out that John Bolton one year ago called Russian interference quote a true act of war and yesterday called the investigation into it a witch hunt. Um, Jeremy this does follow a pattern we see the president go out and make a mistake or be casual and light with Vladimir Putin or another leader like Kim Jong-un, and then it's Mike Pompeo or Nikki Haley or General Mattis who comes in afterward and tries to clearly state that actually what the president said is not what's happening in this administration. Well, it starts with the fact that they have no foreign policy process. They haven't had any meetings to prepare the president. He doesn't want preparation. He doesn't want to read intelligence. He does not want to get advice from his advisors. So they don't actually know what the game is going into the uh, bilateral or the summit. 
Then when they come out, the president says things, it's their job to clean up aisle eight because they know that the statements he's taken, the position he's taken, for example, welcoming a, a quote, joint cybersecurity summit in which Americans will be interrogated by the former KGB agent, that's totally untenable, politically unpopular, and dumb foreign policy. And so, in effect, they're walking behind the elephant with a shovel in their hands at all times. And let's not forget a couple things that happened in, in those exchanges that are basically unprecedented. First of all, back to the meeting where it's just the two of them one-on-one, -on -one, yep. and Pompeo is pressed on whether he had spoken to the translator to verify the president's accounts of this. Has no answer to that. The Secretary of State, our Secretary of State, has no idea what the actual true version of events, the unbiased true version of events is. And second of all, Bob Corker up there sounded like the Democrats. You know, and you could see the, the difference in, in Pompeo's posture because he had to sort of, you know, be more respectful in a way of Senator Corker because they're on the same uh, side. But, you know, we talk over and over again about when a Republican is going to actually stand up. I mean, you saw that uh, in a big way at that hearing. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.